Assalamualaikum. Assalamualaikum. Allah. 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 Ashadu anu Muhammadan Rasulullah Ashadu anu Muhammadan Rasulullah Hayala salam Hayala salam Hayala al-fallah Hayala al-fallah Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar لا إله إلا الله السلام عليكم وعليكم السلام ورحمة الجمعة أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله أكبره وأستغفر دينه وأستغفر ديه وأستغفر وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله Wa dahu la sharika la hu wa ashadu enna muhammadan abduhu wa rasul. With Allah's name, the merciful benefactor, the merciful redeemer, all praise is due to Allah. I praise him and I seek his help and I beg his forgiveness and guidance. And I ask again for his forgiveness. And I bear witness that there is no deity but Allah the One. He has no associates. And I bear witness that Muhammad is his servitor, is his servant and messenger. Invite all to the way of the Lord with wisdom and beautiful preachings and argue with them in ways that are best and most gracious. For the Lord Allah knows best who has strayed from the path and who receives guidance. When the call is given for the Juma prayer, hasten to the remembrance of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and leave off your trading. It is best for you if you but know. Today, I want to, in this talk, I want to give a, I want to make a few points. And I think that maybe if I just kind of explain some things in the beginning, it won't seem like I'm all over the place. Um, my talk has um, a lot to do with our environment, you know, the things that are happening to us and possibly the way that we see in things as Muslims, right? I always... Um, when I prepare my talk, I always think in terms for myself and for you um, about the religion, the deen al fitra al-Islam, Allah's signs, Allah's messages to us as a medicine for us and as a strengthener for our faith. Something that um, will refocus us as we read the Quran, as we should do more often than possibly we're doing. Um, and as we make our prayers regularly, as we should definitely be doing. We should be doing it anyway, but in this day and time we live in, believe me, it is, it could be crazy as hell out there. You know, and I say out there, and um, this may be just my take on it, and maybe you know you could straighten me up on it. And and the reason why I, I read that um, one of the uh, things that we should mention when we give the kutbah, or that we can mention, is the um, surah kaf, the cave, right? Although my talk is not going to be about that. But I think about something that has been right in my face. Um, 
I um, been hearing this a lot lately. Although some days I do not feel too good and I ha I'm having some serious health problems, but I don't feel like I'm on death bed or anything like that. And I know that much thank and praise is due to a lot because I can do so many things that, you know, a lot of people my age don't do for their own selves, right? And I think about the companions of the cave, right? How they were, and I think, I'm sure that that is, you know, that, that there's, there's sim symbolism in it. I mean, I, you, got, you, can't, you can't get the wisdom out of it if you don't look for the symbolism. And they say that um, they were in the cave for 300 years, right? And when they came out of the cave, they say they snoozed and whatever. They came out of the cave and they looked the same, right? They looked the same. And I think about, and I know people say things to flatter you and to flatter myself, but you got to know that living the Islamic life takes wear and tear off of you, right? And, and I like it. I like it, you know, I'm not flattened by it. But I like it when, even as I struggle with my health, people say, Brother Abdullah, you look the same, you know? And I hear, even if they tell you, man, so to, and I know they're telling you the same thing. If they're not, you're here, Imam Tal, I know they're telling you, well, you know, you look the same, brother. Did you look, you know, 20 years ago, or you, when I first met you 20, 30 years ago, you look the same. Your hair is white, but your skin, you look the same, right? And I know they say things like, good good black don't crack, but that's a lie. If you smoking and drinking, you look worse than, you, you more than cracked up, you know what I mean? You beat up from the feet up, and we see them all the time. So I want you to know that um, it's wealth, my talk is wealth and wisdom. There's wealth and wisdom, but there's health, right? And there's health in wisdom also. And there's wealth in health. Imam Sultan gives a real good talk. Sometimes I hope we give it again soon. He, he, when he sees health, there's wealth in your health, okay? And so, anyway. Let me get to this. Allah, if Allah is your helper, none can overcome you. And if he does not help you, who is there to help you? The reliant rely on Allah. That's Quran. Quran, Allah also says in the Quran, he who relies on Allah, Allah is enough for him. Allah also says in the Quran, and be patient in adversity and troubles and during times of stress. Such are they who are on the right track and such are Allah fearing. O you who believe, seek help in firmness and prayer. Surely Allah is with those who are firm. O you who believe, endure and outdo all others in endurance. Be ready and observe your duty to Allah so that you may succeed. It is only the evil one that suggests to you the fear of his valteries. And I looked up this word valteries and what it's, what it's saying with that is that Satan will always remind you of your duties to other things your job. But what about this? Don't forget. Yeah, I know you're a Muslim. I know. I know. I know it's Juma. But don't forget this. You know, don't forget that. Don't forget. He pulls on you and he and he calls his stress. And he calls you two things other than the worship of Allah. You see. And it said, it is only the evil one that suggests to you the fear of his Valteries. Be not afraid of them, but fear me, Allah, if you have faith. I um, 
picked up the Bible, right? I got an old Bible that belonged to my uncle. And honestly, I've always, always been impressed with the part of the Bible that uh, Proverbs, right? Proverbs is uh, Prophet Suleiman talking to one of his sons, and he's counseling one of his sons in Proverbs, right? And also, I'll say this, as far as um, the inspiration for my talk, I, say, I looked at, I look at things, and I said, this world is so crazy. I mean, how do you get so crazy? How do you get so violent, so lost? And I am, um, I have to put my own prejudices to check, you see. So in trying to check my own prejudice, I picked up the Bible. And I started reading some of it, and I had to think. I said, you know what? It ain't Christianity. You know, I, I feel that it's, it's not what I need, you know, Christianity. I feel this is what I need, and this is what I like. And I feel that so many of our people will could flourish in our Islam, in the Islamic community, right? And, you know, that's just my example. That's just my experiences with them. But you can't blame Scripture. And we used to call the Bible the poison book. But you can't blame the Bible for the craziness of people today. It's plenty of wisdom in those scriptures. And if they are sincere, like our book tells us, if they are sincere, if they have just a, a just the understanding and just the faith of the mustard seed, you see, just faith the size of mustard seed, then they can succeed with the wisdom of Christianity, you see. And we know, we know that as the Quran teaches us that when we say al-Islam, although for purposes of understanding and dealing with this and dealing with that argument, you know, we speak as if there are differences. And there are differences in people in the way they worship. But Allah's plan and Allah's signs are one. And we're taught that the prophethood is one. And that the message is one. And, and we're taught that it says, seek wisdom from the cradle to the grave and go even unto China for wisdom, you see. And look, we don't have to go all the way to China. Some of us just gotta go to, some, some of us who are not Muslims, old Muslims, some just gotta go to the China closet, you see, where we keep our Bible and possibly our Quran. Some of us ain't gotta go to China. We just gotta go to the bookstore. You can go to, uh, I, I had to pick my medicine up today. You can go to CVS. They got all kinds of uh, positive affirmations that are not confusing at all. You see, that are just simply wisdom and positive affirmations. They have explanation, they have books on all kinds of explanation of the Bible of different parts of the Bible, right there in CVS, much less going to a religious bookstore, you see, much less asking God to bless them before they open up the book or the Bible, you see. And I just want to share just a few things, you know, um, on wisdom so, and getting it back to so, um, my um, theme, wealth is wisdom. Wealth and wisdom. The wealth and wisdom. In Prophet Suleiman's talk to his son, which they call Proverbs, many, he speaks of wisdom as a woman, right? He speaks, he speaks of wisdom as a woman. And then he goes on 
and he uses, he interchanges wisdom with rubies and gold. And then he interchanges wisdom, the word wisdom, with silver, you see. And he does it over and over again. And I thought about it, you know what I mean? If you don't think that the wisdom and the knowledge that you have is worthless, if you think you're missing something, you see what I'm saying? See, look, you can come to me. I'm getting kind of off, but I get back on. But it's still, it's my talk. Look, if I can, you got a thousand dollars in your pocket. If I can convince you that that thousand dollars with Benjamin and Benjamins and and Jacksons and Hamilton is worthless, you just got them from the bank. If I can convince you that what you got is worthless. You got a nice house, a refrigerator full of food. If I can convince you that where you live is subpar, if I can convince you that your car ain't no good, that it's a, a, a bunch of junk, you see, but it's getting you everywhere you gotta go. If I can convince you that your religion and that your knowledge of God ain't no good, you understand? Uh, you don't know nothing. You look, you I don't care what you know. If you ain't got none of this, you ain't got nothing. You see, all of it is the same thing. If you will be poor. You will be poor. You see, it says a wise man will hear and will increase learning. And a man of understanding shall attain unto counsel, wise counselors. Now this, I love this, and we, we teach it you here. And a lot of imams teach this, but it's out of Proverbs. The fear of the Lord, Allah, Rabbi al -Amin. it says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. With all your getting, get understanding. And it says, exalt her. He's talking about wisdom. Exalt her, and she shall promote you. Being wise brings you up in life. Your wisdom will bring you, bring your station up in life. And she shall promote you and she shall bring to you honor when she embrace when you embrace her when you embrace wisdom she shall give to you give to your head an ornament of grace a crown of glory shall she deliver to you talking about wisdom right now i want to kind of change gears a little bit and before i go further on into my talk i want to i want to share the definition of two words that are always relevant in Islamic talks and in our Islam. The first word is Allah. We all think that we know what Allah is. You know, everybody knows what God is. That's what they think, you know what I mean? Just like everybody, everybody can't drive a car, you see them all the time, but you gotta learn how to drive a car. Most people can have babies but everybody don't know how to be a parent, you see. So, just like, you know, I know I'm not delivering any revelations to you or anything, but this is Juma, this is remembrance. We're here for the remembrance of Allah. I would like to give you a definition of two words, right? The first word is from the dictionary of the Holy Quran. And the first word is Allah, uh, the definition of Allah. And believe me that what I give you ain't all of it. If I gave you this, and I gave you the very best definitions and examples that the world has of all 99 attributes, and tacked it onto this, and tacked all of the books on physics and any books of relevant knowledge that exists is still 
it still couldn't it couldn't give you a complete definition of a lot. You understand? And like the Quran says that if the trees were pins and the oceans were ink ten times over, you they would exhaust before you could exhaust the wisdom of a lot, right? That's kind of paraphrasing, but you know that, that you've heard that before. It says that a law is the proper noun applied to the supreme being, who is the sole possessor of all perfect attributes, who is free from all defects, and who exists necessarily by himself. It is not a common noun. All divine attributes mentioned in the Holy Quran are qualities of the proper name. Allah. No other language, and listen to this, no other language has a distinctive name for the divine being. No other language has a distinctive name for the divine being. The names found in other languages are either attributive, attributive or descriptive but the, and also they can be used in the plural form. You can't use a lot in the plural form. But the word a lot is never used for any other thing, being or deity. It is never used as a qualifying word. You can't describe nothing else with the word a lot. You can't talk about no other thing and attributed Allah as an attribute to it. Scholars say since Al, in the beginning of the word Allah, is inseparable from it, so it is a simple substantive, not divided from any other word. Not derived, derived from any other word. The word Allah is not a, a contraction of Al, Al dash, Allah, as some people think and tend to believe, but quite a different word. This being the proper name of the Supreme Being and having no parallel or equivalent in any other language of the world. The original name Allah should be retained in the translation, the English word God which is the common Teutonic word for a personal object of religious worship applied to all superhuman beings of heathen mythology, Zeus and all of them, and Hercules and you know, all of them, who exercise power over nature and human being can hardly be even an approximate substitute. And then they say the word Yehovah, Jehovah, so it means, oh, that person. Allah, the proper name of the Almighty, the Supreme Being. The Quran says, Bismillah, Rahman, Rahim, Aleph, Aleph, Lam, Min. Allah, there is no God but He, the living, the self subsisting, the eternal. It is He who sent down to you step by step in truth the book. Confirming what went before it. And he set down the law of Moses and the gospel of Jesus. Before this, as a guide to mankind, and he set down the criterion of judgment between right and wrong. Those who reject, reject faith in the signs of Allah will suffer the severest penalty. <clears throat> and Allah is exalted in might, Lord of retribution. From Allah, nothing is hidden on earth or in the heavens. He it is who shapes you in the womb and pleases as he pleases. There is no God but he exalted in might the wise. Although I use the book, the dictionary of the Holy Quran for these two definitions, that's just to bring our focus to something. But I'm not a fool and I tell you I know that the best definition that we can find of Allah is in the Holy Quran. He describes himself over and over 
and he it is the it is the most beautiful in the most beautiful and the most comprehensive ways you see so I'm just bringing your focus to this but for further you know and we're talking about wisdom so of course we won't stop ever as long as we breathe trying to learn more about Allah you see and the best way to learn about Allah is in his holy Quran all right the second word that I want to deal with is Rabba. The root word for Rabba. We say the Lord, you know, a lot of times when you say Rabba, you know, it's, it's like they use God for Allah. We say <coughs> Rab for, and we say the Lord for Rab, as Rab in Rabbi el -Abin. And believe me, the word Lord is as inefficient and deficient as God is compared to Allah, as Lord the Lord is to Rabba. But I'm going to get a definition that, uh, definition of the Holy Quran, right? Words of the Holy Quran. To be Lord and Master, collect, possess. Rule, increase, complete, perfume, bring up, preserve, last, rub, master, chief, determiner, provider, sustainer, perfecter, rewarder, ruler, creator, maintainer, reposer of properties, king of nature, developer, Former of rules and laws of growth. Regulator. Foster of things in such a manner as to make it attain one, one, uh, to attain one condition after another until it reaches its goal of completion. The word rub conveys not only the idea of fostering, bringing up or nourishing, but also regulate it says regularizing, bringing to maturity and evolution from the earliest state to that of the highest perfection. Rob also means originator of things and their combiner to create new forms. Rob, this word also points to the law of evolution in the physical and the spiritual world. The real principle of evolution is not inconsistent with the belief in Allah or what they think is the real principle of evolution. The word Rob point to the fact that a human being has been created for unlimited progress. We must admit that all other languages lack equivalent, lack an equivalent of the word as they have equivalents for other words. And also, the word Rahman, Rahman, Rahim, Hamd, and Allah. There's no equivalent in other languages for these words. Rab, nourisher to perfection. Lord, the word Lord is but a very poor substitute for the Arabic word Rab. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Alhamdulillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Malik ya Madin Iya kanabudu yaka nistayin Indina sarotala Mustaqim sarotala dina And amta alayhim Gaul makdubi alayhim Mantudah And I'd like to just finish this off For now with The footnote In this Quran uh, This is translation Abdullah Yusuf Ali, right? New edited edition. It says in the footnotes, it says that the Arabic word Rab, usually translated Lord, has also the meaning of cherishing, sustaining, bringing to maturity. Allah cares for all the worlds He has created. All the worlds He has created. That's why I was so much wisdom in, in uh, when Imam Muhammad used to say, uh, 
Lord, Lord of all the worlds of knowledge. You know, uh, there are many worlds, astronomical and physical worlds, worlds of thought, spiritual world, and so on. In every one of them, Allah is all in all. We express only one aspect of it when we say, "In Him we live and move and have and have our being." The mystical division between worlds is, we say, nasut one nasut. That's the human world knowledge by the senses and malik. To Malikaku. Maliku. The invisible world of the angels. And Lakut. The divine world of reality. And it says all of this requires a whole volume to explain it. More than one volume for sure. Uh, it is reported that. Uh, It's reported that uh, Prophet Muhammad said that, his reporter said, we were with Prophet Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, on a journey. And somebody stood up repeating aloud, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. And the messenger said, uh, men, be easy on yourselves. And do not distress yourselves by raising your voices. Verily, you do not call on one deaf or absent, but verily on one who hears and sees, and he is with you. And he to whom you pray is near to you than your own juggler band. We could talk and talk, and we never could exhaust the wisdom of the law. There are volumes of books on the presence of Allah and the signs of Allah, and rightly so. I advise you and I remind you and myself that Allah is always greater and bigger and wiser than man in any of his devices. It's also reported that the Messenger of Allah said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, said, there is a polish for everything that takes away rust. And the polish of the heart is the remembrance of Allah, said the prophet. The companion said, is not repelling the infidel, infidels also like this? Muhammad said, no. Although fight until your sword is broken. And let me rephrase that. He says, no even though you fight until your sword is broken. I think y'all understand that. So what he's saying is the remembrance of Allah is more benefit for you than the fight, than the physical jihad. Although you be in the physical jihad and you fight until your sword is broken. You see what I'm saying? And also he said the most excellent jihad is that for the conquest of self. Jihad Akbar, the conquest of self. And back to wealth. The report that the prophet said, wealth does not come from abundance of goods, but from a contented heart. And it, and it says that and an excellent Islamic practice is to give up what is not one's business. And why do I say that? Because the distractions of the world draw us in so often. And a lot of our misery and our confusion that we suffer from, and some of the stress is because we want to know what the magazines say about this. We want to know what the magazines say about that. We want to know what color somebody was wearing. We're worried about the lady in Kentucky that won't marry the homosexuals or won't give them what. Okay, well, 
agree or don't disagree, that don't put no grits on my table. You see what I'm saying? Ain't nobody asking me. You know what I mean? And it really don't really matter. But they got it on the news. Boom, 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 boom. And you know how the news is, you know. Boom, 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 puppet dog, right? Murder, murder, murder. And now they, they got homosexual, 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 uh, uh, rape. Boom, 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 puppet dog, puppet dog, puppet dog. And the weather and what some football player said, you know. And then what somebody was wearing over here. And that's the news. And they draw you in and they pump it up and they pump it up. And, and so if we put our minds to what is our own business a lot of times, we won't get our emotions so involved that maybe we can avoid some of this great hair that we get. You know what I mean? We looking at TV and next thing you know, boing, 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 something to get on your nerves so bad, boing, boing, they gonna never gray hair the, the turn from black to gray. You know what I mean? <laughs> you worried about what the puppy dog did. <laughs> anyway. Let us, let us ask for forgiveness. With Allah's name, the merciful benefactor, the merciful redeemer. All praises to Allah. We ask Allah's peace and blessings on the one best among the prophets, as Muhammad ibn Abdullah, as well as on his family and his companions. Assalamu alaikum. Before I close, or in closing, I would like to say a few things, um, a few more things. First, I'll start with the Quran. The Quran says, seek help from Allah and be patient. The earth belongs to Allah. Anyone he wishes from among his servants shall inherit. What Allah has for you again, this is another question. What Allah has for you, they, they, they're not going to stop. Keep working in the way of righteousness. Don't despair. Don't, don't, don't lose faith. And you know how we are. We, we so, you know what I mean? It's time. He ain't blessed me now. He ain't blessed me by now. Something wrong with Allah's time. You're looking at, I don't care if you're looking at a Rolex or, it got diamond, diamond encrusted Rolex. What that mean by the time of Allah? You know, Allah's time. Allah bless you with what he want to bless you with in his time. He the boss. You know, and he don't have to go by, and he don't have to go by the rules of bosses past. Whatever's written. You know what I mean? But damn, he, what kind of boss is he? What kind of boss is Allah? It's time, it's lunch time. It's, it's time for me to have a brand new car. You know what I mean? You know, why I ain't got the why I ain't got the uh, Maserati yet? I'm a good guy. Come on, man. Just don't 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 get yourself out of pocket. You see what I'm saying? I remember Imam Muhammad was saying this one time. And I hope I can do just for that. And I, this always stick with me. He was talking about faith. And he was saying that uh, we lose faith, right? But the thing is, we don't we don't be doing what we should be doing, right? And we and our faith get weak, and pretty soon we start losing weight, losing faith. Our faith gets weak, and the next thing you know, you gotta fall. You falling out, and this the way I know he said this, but you falling out with faith. You gotta fight, or you 
you analyze it and you got to put your twist on faith and I know this about faith and I know that and why you you falling out with faith you have a falling out with faith and the next thing you know you done lost faith because you know what dealing with something as good and pure as that is if you don't obey a law you're going to lose that argument every time the, the Christians even had a, a play a long time ago your arms is too short to box with God boy you know what I mean but anyway so fill us oh Allah fill us fill us full of patience and make our feet firm and help us against the disbelievers. That's wrong. And anyone who acts patiently and forgives, that you got to be forgiving also, and forgives, truly, he is preserving in a fast. I, uh, I want to talk just a little bit, and I got a few minutes. One of our biggest faults as a people is that we try to make sense of the world by the logic of a mix of mythology, fairy tale, and Shakespeare. You know, because most of the writings and entertaining and entertainment. And stuff they, they they go on the theme of you know you find the same things themes run through mythology their mythology their fairy tales and Shakespeare you know even the Bible is written in Shakespearean what they call Shakespearean language you know most Bibles that they, although they got a modern Bible that has tried to take that out of it and we use the, the, the logic of a mentality uh, of, of that kind of mentality when we look at and listen to the happenings of the current world, we look through the lenses of red, white, and blue, looking for the happy ever after, as dictated and, and, by, and, and, and dictated by a manipulative master that has lost any remnants of strength and character. We live in a time when capitalism is substituted for patronism, for patriotism. What I'm saying is you can be called accused of treason and you can be in accordance with the legal documents of this country, the constitution, even the local laws. You can be in accordance with that. But Sometimes if you try to hold up the principles of God above that, they would call you anti-American. You know, I'm not saying they the wise ones, but that voice is, you, you, you can hear that loud voice sometimes, you see. And see, the greatest patriot, uh, patriot, uh, patriot of, us, of, of us all, we call Prophet Ibrahim, the patron of Allah, you see, or the patriot of Allah. Christmas with the red, white, and blue, Santa Claus, and message of Christmas is spin, 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 spin. You know, it's supposed to be a religious message in there, but capitalism has drowned out that religious message. <coughs> Easter. <coughs> Although the word Easter comes from a pagan god, uh, the god of fertility and spring, and they use that as the name of that holiday, and we know that that is supposed to be the resurrection of the resurrection of Christ. But they got a white bunny that the children know more about them than they know about. Them. The story of Jesus and the message of that is spin, spin, spin. America's once important message of healthy 
and strong family life has been replaced with the importance of, of a corporate America. A few rich bosses and American masses, black, white, Asian, Hispanic, struggling day to day. And people are so plugged in to their cell phones, computers, TVs, iPods, smart this and smart that, that they, they've lost the focus on what gives them strength and what really gives them wealth in life. And they lose, they have lost the focus on what really counts in life. And then life rope, they let go the rope of life, or the, of, of, of life and life everlasting. They have let go that rope altogether. The rope of he healthy living, healthy thinking, healthy family life, healthy community life. They let all that go. And they grabbing after, I say like cotton candy, because you know when you eat cotton candy, you're not cotton candy. They grabbing at, at, at cotton candy rewards in life, cotton candy wealth in life, cotton candy status, right? And I think about um, the word ghetto fabulous, right? They ghetto fab, but look, I always, when I think about ghetto fab, you know what I think about? I think about Charlie Tuna. Yeah, I remember Charlie Tuna. It was commercial. Star Kids had a commercial, and it was a tuna, right? A talking tuna named Charlie the Tuna, and he had a he had a like a New York Brooklyn accent. You know what I mean? And they never wanted to, the people that caught the free. You know, it's, it's ridiculous. But li listen to what I'm saying. They never wanted Charlie. They always threw Charlie back, right? He was kind of skinny, had glasses on, and he had a tan and everything, and he was trash talking. And so they throw him back, and Charlie started playing tennis, right? He played tennis because that's probably what the upper echelon did, right? They just show you how Charlie missed everything, right? He played tennis, right? And then he, he got pearls on and diamond rings and watches and this, that, and other. And then he played a harp, and then he played a violin, right? And then you see Charlie at the opera and all like that. Always different commercials, right? And, and it always ended like this, they say, No, Charlie, no, Charlie. Stock kids don't want tuna with good taste. They want tuna that tastes good. You see what I'm saying? And I think about that because with the ghetto fabulous thing, and not only the ghetto fabulous, right? so-called sophisticated people. They think that their way of life, you know what I mean? They think that their riches, they've gone to mountains like Noah's son. Uh, like Noah's son, they get up on the mountain and they think that when the flood comes, that they're going to be some kind of way their riches, some kind of way what they consider as class status is going to save them. None of that is going to save them. What they, the laws they have made up or their standards, their made up standards, that's not going to save them. The knowledge of God is what's going to save you. And your obedience to the laws of the one and only Allah. See, the one God, Allah. You get the Sarata Mustaqim. You see, not ghetto fabulous, not Charlie, uh, they want something that tastes good, not with good taste. You see what I'm saying? Quality. We have to be quality people. You see? And with the cell phones, and I'm kind of silly sometimes, and I can't help it. I just got that in me sometimes. And I'll be thinking about uh, where some people are going. And you may not find it funny, you know what I mean? But we have to be careful because it's funny, but it's some seriousness in it. They are coming up again with the um, warnings about cell phones. And you think people are crazy now. They once again give you the warnings about cell phones and brain cancer, right? 
And then I look at the way people dress, right? And we wear, you know, it's cold as hell. We like to wear the little short uh, jackets and stuff, you know, and the midriffs out and everything. And that's 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 right it that's cold and arthritis all in the back in the legs and stuff like that. And they're gonna can you imagine how people are gonna look? It's gonna be sad. But they're gonna be they're gonna be walking almost on all fours, you know, they're gonna be bent over, it's gonna be crazy, it's gonna be hard, right? And like I say, I'm kinda in the Bible, in scriptures, have you ever heard of a Moloch? You know what a Moloch is? In scripture, the word Moloch, you heard people, we hear the three stooges call each other Molochs, right? And we hear it as a, as a derogative term towards one another, um, a way of calling people stupid. You a Moloch, right? But guess what a Moloch is? A Moloch is a thigh worshiper, right? They had the time machine on the other day. Most of us, when we think about Molochs, we think about the movie Time Machines, but the word Moloch comes from the Bible, right? From Scripture. It means fire worship. And, but they have kind of a good description of them in the movie. You know, they they look a certain way because they live underground, you know, in caves. And you think about today. When we grew up, it wasn't, can I play with the... Uh, Game Boy, Dad and Mom can't play with the Game Boy. Can I look at TV, Daddy? Can I get on my computer, Daddy? And Mama, no, we want to go outside. Can I go outside? Can I go outside? Can I go outside? Nowadays, they have, they manipulated and they have worked it where we all up in the house, all huddled up in the house. Summertime, beautiful days, we in the house, kids in the house like this. And everything plugged in. And what's in the wall? Fire. What what gives the TV, the computer, all that? What gives it the juice? Where does the juice for the cell phone that we have become so addicted to? That's fire. You understand? We in the house fire as fire worshippers. We ain't nothing but a bunch of damn Molochs. And you ain't much more than the definition of a Moloch if that's what you're doing. You see, proper dictionary definition, Moloch. You see, but anyway, some people, um, they say that they've even come on regular TV and not know you ain't got to look off-brand channels, nothing. They say that some <coughs> brands of TV, be careful of some brands of TV, because that TV can look into your home. Y'all hear that? I don't know. It was on regular news. I ain't got cable. I got the regular news. It was on regular news. And they say not only can certain brands of TV look into your home, they can hear what you, you're saying. You turn it off, but it's plugged in to the fire. And they can look into your home wherever that is. And you saw what they did with, the, with that white Jeep, right? Guy was driving the Jeep. It was, a, it was an experiment, but still, somebody got on a computer and took the Jeep, took control of the Jeep from the guy driving the Jeep and drug it into, drove it into a ditch, right? Okay. But see, technology is not so much what it should be to us as a service to act to humanity. You know, we just wanted to have it. It has hypnotized the masses. Technology has become the new Tile of Babel. Remember the Tile of Babel in the Bible? In Scripture. Don't disqualify anything good because where it comes from. Look for the good and the wisdom in life. The people are now the new Molochs. 
fire worshipers. Trick thy lead salvation in the name of progress. We try to make sense of a world that makes no sense in the scheme of the world. In in a world for the for for laws, man and woman. See though that, that scheme, it ain't gonna make no sense in a godly life. So it, you just it ain't gonna make no sense to you. So you know what I mean? Don't waste your time on a lot of foolishness. The destiny of laws, man and woman, the believer, is different from that of the disbelievers. Our brains and thoughts are befogged by the logic of a corrupt, manipulative system that has turned its back on its own best qualities. The so-called leadership has forsaken the ideas of justice in their own founding documents, the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, much less than just the freedom ideals of the Bible. The believer's success, our victory, is not dependent on their acceptance of right principles or their acceptance of our deem. Their scripture says, you reap what you sow. As a human being, and as a human being and the way we are made, we, are not, we don't rejoice in man's ignorance and sufferings. We, sh we should know that Allah is most merciful and there are and has been many, many warners and messages and scriptures are full of beautiful examples and admonitions. I'm not going to give all of what I want to say today not much that I'll miss. But I do want to get this little part in right here. It kind of keep us right here. And I'll finish up. These are the words of Imam Muhammad. He said, we are a community whose central life is faith. Faith in one God and faith in all that is established by his word. That includes Muhammad the prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who lives out the message of God revealed to him. In regard to our activities, we are to think of life as community life and live the life of community. That means we have to build a community, and I'll, I'll end with that on that. And I can come back some other time and do the rest of that too. Allah is the most just. He, Allah, made us with backbones and a mind to think. Allah has not created anything better than reason or anything more. These are, these, uh, this report from Muhammad said this. Allah has not created anything better than reason or anything more beautiful and perfect than reason. The benefits which Allah gives us on its account and understanding is by it, and Allah's wrath is caused by it, and by it are rewards and punishments. O oh Allah, let that our hearts deviate after you have guided us. O oh Allah, grant us mercy. For for you, Allah, are the grant of bounty for our measure. Amen. Amen. O oh Allah, we seek your refuge from the knowledge that brings no good and the heart that has no fear of Allah and from the self that cannot be satisfied Amen. and from the prayer that cannot be answered. O oh Allah, bless us with the good of this life and protect us from the hellfire and grant us the paradise. Amen. Allah wa akbar, Allah wa akbar. Ashadu wa la alayhi wa la. Ashadu anni muhammadan rasulullah. Hayya la salah, hayya la falah. Ka be kama ti salah, ka be kama ti salah. Allahu akbar, Allahu akbar. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah.